Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifier's tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at Gibbs reflective model. Now before we start today's tutorial I'd like to request my subscribers to visit and like my brand new Facebook page. It's another way for me to try and connect with my learners and also for you to share content with others easily. Okay now human beings like to learn and improve from experience as we all know but the process of improving from experience requires an element of reflection and introspection it's not enough to just experience something to get better at it one actually needs to consciously think about what was done and what can be done better to get better results and the Gibbs reflective model provides us a tool to understand this process of learning from experience so where can this tool actually be used? Where can this model be used? It can be used for self-improvement. If you have encountered a situation and thought better preparation or a different approach would have actually produced better results, you can actually use the model to structure your thoughts and develop the capabilities to get a better outcome next time you encounter it. Coaching or mentoring. If you're coaching or mentoring other people, you can use the tool to help them understand how they fared the first time around and actually help them get better for the next experience. So basically you can uh, help other people out on their journey of self-improvement. Self now let's look at the actual model. As we can see that the model consists of uh, six steps. Now the model can actually be separated out into two sections. The first section consisting of the, the first three steps, description, feeling and evaluation. And the next uh, section consisting of uh, the the rest of the three parts which are analysis conclusion and action plan now dividing the tool into two sections will actually help you remember the individual parts uh, with the perspective of an examination and obviously the, the the stages themselves will get a lot clearer for you uh, through the course of this tutorial now let's look at the first step which is description now this step is all about describing the situation in detail uh, and just understand what actually happened. Recollect and understand what actually happened. Now, as we spoke, we have two perspectives uh, possible, uh, two uses of the tool. The tool can be used uh, to aid self-improvement or for coaching and mentoring. Now, let's look at the tool as an aid for self-improvement for the purpose of this tutorial and look at some questions that can uh, be used to actually make sense of each step or stage. Okay, now here are some of the questions to ask in this step. What actually happened? What was the situation? And what did you do in the situation? What, were there actually other people involved in the situation? And what did these other people do? And what was the outcome of the situation? Now, these are some of the questions. There can be others, but these are some of the questions you can try asking yourself to, to describe the situation to the best possible capacity. Okay, now at this stage it's important to, to try not draw any conclusions and simply state what happened. The next step is feeling. In this stage it's important to understand what one felt before, during and after the situation. Now with our self-improvement perspective in mind, let's look at some relevant questions to ask ourselves. What was the feeling before the situation? What was the feeling after the situation? If there are others involved, what did they feel during and after the situation? Again, we focus on not concluding anything at this stage and simply focus on gathering data. Now, it's important to understand the existence of this stage. See, when it comes to self-improvement, self-improvement is actually an internal process. You have to tell yourself that I need to improve something. So it's it's very important to actually look at what you felt during the situation. If you didn't feel good, that's the impetus to, to, to drive yourself for self-improvement. Improve yourself so that you don't feel the same way you feel better than you felt last time. Now the next step is evaluation. In this step, we start actually looking objectively at the situation here. We try and understand what worked and what didn't. Now here are some of the questions. What was positive about the situation? what actually went well what was negative about the situation and so what did not go well or as well as expected okay and if there were others involved what did they contribute towards now the next step is uh, analysis this is one of the most important steps in the model wherein we understand why the experience was positive and negative 
or negative. We try and understand what the internal and external situations were which resulted in the outcomes we achieved. Now here we separate out the aspects that went well or, uh, and the aspects that went badly and question why it was so. This is the stage wherein we can include academic literature or tools to aid our understanding of the situation. Okay, here are some of the questions we can use. What, what things specifically go well? What specific things did not go well? And then what additional knowledge can help me understand the situation better? Okay, so this, this step is all about uh, gathering the knowledge required to understand the situation better and piecing it apart and analyzing it one by one. Now the next step is conclusions. In this step we actually draw conclusions on what happened, we summarize our learnings and highlight what changes could actually improve the outcome in the future. Now here are the, here are the questions to use. What did I learn from this situation? How could this have been a, a more positive situation for everybody involved? Now what skills do I need to develop for me to handle a situation like this better? And is there anything else I could have done? Okay, now then we move on to the final stage which is action plan. Now here is the stage where we actually start taking actions. We go on that course correction route and we actually start implementing uh, whatever we planned to implement and start making those changes. You create a specific plan of action based on your conclusions. So the plan will entail what you actually need to do in preparation of the event happening again and also about how you position yourself to do things differently the next time it happens. And here are some of the questions that you can use. How will I develop the skills needed to get better? How will I review my progress? How will I actually put the new skills acquired into practice? And how will I actually do things differently next time? Okay, now let's look at a very simple example, an example of group dinners between uh, a group of friends. Now, uh, it's just a group of five friends who actually eat uh, at, at, at a different person's house every couple of weekends. Uh, so one of the five friends would actually host a dinner evening and invite the others round. Okay, now let's get straight into the description stage where we actually describe what happened, what the situation is and move on from there. Now we have a group of five friends with whom we eat every couple of weeks in each person's house. The situation at hand was that when it was my time to host, I didn't feel the evening turned out as planned and that the others managed to actually host a better evening when it was their turn to do so. The aim was to get better at hosting a meal for when it was my turn to host again. Okay, now a good thing to note here is that we observe and document everything that happened objectively and not actually pass any judgment. So we just simply state what happened here. Okay, and uh, through the course of this uh, example, you're going to see that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of reading out from the slides because I want the whole example to be in front of you so that you know if you want to make notes, if you want to copy it down, you can do so. All right. So the next step is feeling. Now, what was the feeling? I felt a bit overwhelmed and nervous at the start of the evening as this was the first time I had done this and because everyone else before me did a great job with cooking and hosting. So there, was, there were nerves uh, and that actually contributed towards uh, the slight mismanagement that happened. Now I felt that my friends had a good time overall and then they did actually appreciate the effort. But I also did feel that they would have enjoyed more than they did if they actually got served better quality food and if the food was served on time. Now at this stage it's again important to remember that you document whatever you felt and not scrutinize anything yet. Okay now we go on to the uh, the next stage that is uh, evaluation. Now. On the positive side, the banter was great, the atmosphere was very relaxed and the drinks went down well and quickly. It's always a good sign. And the card game that was laid out was also a success. Now on the negative side, the meat from the main dish was undercooked to begin with as the hob wasn't turned on a high enough flame. I therefore had to put it back into the pan and heat it for another 20 minutes and this delayed the proceedings. Okay, so that's one of the problems being highlighted here. 
Now the next problem was that the starter was cold and to add to the problems we ran out of ketchup. Okay now it's important to note that we are starting to get to the bottom of the situation here and we start to evaluate the problem to then get to the solution this stage. Now the next step analysis. Now how do we correct the situation? How do we analyze it and then correct the situation? The first step to ensuring that the meat in the main course was thoroughly cooked which was one of the main problems was ensuring that a proper recipe was referred to. Now when it comes to preparing a delicate dish timing is key. It was therefore necessary to to follow a recipe and understand how long this sort of meat should be cooked and at what temperature. Now the starter needed to be prepared just before the guests arrived so that it's still hot and fresh and you know it shouldn't be done a couple of hours before the event because of all the anxiety that we had and there should definitely have been additional supplies of ketchup okay now we need to get as specific as possible here and the aim should be to to separate the problems out into individual pieces and then pr uh, solve each aspect now the next step is conclusion. Well, it is important to conclude that the evening was fun, uh, but it was fun because of the, the personalities of the guests that were invited and the games and the drinks provided. The food therefore needs to be uh, made on time and it needs to be made right so that the food doesn't actually play spoil sport in any way. And with some proper preparation and reference, the food experience will also be better next time around and the evening will be more fun. Okay, now one of the aims here is to conclude the analysis so that, you know, one can refer back to the results of the analysis and use it as a, as a reference point later. Okay, now the final step here is action plan. Now this is where we make specific actions so that, you know, we get onto that course correction journeys. Now the specific actions are that the main dish wasn't perfect, needs to be perfected with the help of a simple recipe book. So that's one of the main action points. Start referring to a recipe book the next time you actually start cooking that uh, recipe. A couple of practice runs of food preparation will ensure that there is no panic or nerves on the day. So why not do a quick practice run a day before, you know, maybe just yourself and your spouse or uh, a couple of other friends etc and just get rid of the nerves now additional condiments needs to be added to the shopping list so there's there's an additional uh, additional stock and there's no problems of any condiments running out so this is just a basic reminder to uh, to have additional stock and good enough supplies okay now it's important to ensure here that the action plan as we've just seen consists of action items which are specific and measurable this will ensure that we get things uh, that we get things right and go don't go through the whole cycle of uh, of trying to understand what happened and correcting it because we need to get better the, than what we actually uh, were from the beginning of at the beginning of the uh, the process. So at the end of uh, at the end of the action plan, we need to have that confidence that we are moving in the right direction. Is what I'm trying to say. And it's important to then implement the actions in the action plan and then get to that uh, get to that stage. We actually feel that we have done, uh, we have succeeded in our course of self-improvement and we've actually managed to use it successfully. Remember, self-improvement is a lot to do with how you feel. So the feeling element is also very important because if you feel right, you, you think that you have actually embarked on the journey of self-improvement and you've actually made steady progress. Okay, great. I uh, thank you very much for your attendance to this uh, tutorial. And as always, I'd like to encourage you to, uh, to, to recommend topics to be covered in this channel. Uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel and, uh, and just uh, also try and visit uh, my new Facebook page. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye.